Alrighty, JK Leeds here. Welcome all you dad lads. You know, completing the boss weapons only run on Dark Souls 2 last month got me thinking, is this run possible on Dark Souls 1? Your first thought is probably no, because of the fact you can only turn boss souls into weapons when you get to Anor Londo. But the run is entitled boss weapons only, not boss souls only, and there is an important distinction there. So the rules, as per the previous video, where every boss must be defeated with a boss weapon or spell, and each one can only be used to defeat one boss. This time though, as well as boss souls, any weapons bosses drop, either upon defeat or from a tail cut, count as boss weapons, as well as any weapon that I see a boss using that I can pick up from somewhere else. There's three further caveats though that I had to allow for Dark Souls 1 in order to make this run viable. First, Asylum Demon can be killed with firebombs. I think this kind of makes sense, there's literally no way you can kill this guy with a boss weapon. Second, the first boss weapon that I get can be used twice. I needed to do it to make the numbers match up, there just wasn't another way around it, so I thought using the first weapon for this made the most sense. And lastly, one boss is going to be skipped and one boss is going to be killed with fists only. Don't worry, they're rubbish bosses, you really won't miss them. Leveling up is allowed of course, as I need the stats to wield the weapons, but I will not be leveling health, stamina, or upgrading the weapons, just to make the challenge a bit zesty. Let me know your favourite Dark Souls 1 boss weapon in the comments below, and of course, hit the subscribe button to support the channel. So first, I spend longer than I should trying to make my character green, I, I failed, but then choose Thief as our starting class, and Black Fire Bombs as the starting gift. Thief is important for this as we need the master key, but we also need those black fire bombs. With these, we can kill the asylum demon on first encounter. It takes just five of them, and now we actually get the first boss weapon, the demon's great hammer. This will only drop if you kill the asylum demon on that first encounter. Now this weapon, as I said before, I'm going to make an exception by allowing myself to use this two times, but the extra use will only unlock after I've beaten the stray demon. There wasn't really any way around it, I needed to do this to make the numbers match up and make this run possible. But for now, I can't use it at all as it needs 46 strength. So it's useless for a while. We take Lord Rand's equivalent of private jet and touch down in the Terminate Zelda Shrine. So where is our first destination you might ask? Right down into the catacombs. I made the drop down first try with no issue. No issue. I nestled in this coffin, sitting there for ages, only to realise nothing happens unless you have the Eye of Death, so I grabbed these from behind the Fortnite demon and jumped back in for another slumber. I'm amazed that I didn't die there. I can now join the Gravelord Covenant to get the Gravelord Sword and the Gravelord Sword Dance. I'm counting the sword as a boss weapon, as you see Nito using it. Gravelord Sword Dance also does count in this same way, but it's kind of useless as you can only cast it twice and there's no items to restore spell casts in this game. I'm not even sure if I'll have a chance to use it, but it's there if I do find an opportunity. With Gravelord Sword in hand, we head below Firelink, use the Master Key, travel all the way up to Andre, and use this bonfire. I'm still one level short of being able to use the Gravelord Sword, so I had to try and kill these guys with the sword as it is, without having the right stats for it. But, once I've got those stats, this thing just rips through everything. I thought the Black Knight weapons were strong, but this thing is insane. It wrecks everything in sight. So we try the gargoyles, and this weapon basically trivialised it. My only concern was making sure I cut the tail to get the tail axe. It also seems that the RNG gods smiled upon me as killing them netted me the gargoyles halberd. Didn't even have to save state and reset or anything. I'm sure this luck will continue through the rest of the run with no issues. Yeah. Now initially I thought about fighting Quelag right away, but the damage was not great with either gargoyle or weapon. I decided the best bet would be to use these weapons to kill weaker bosses first, so back to the tourist demon. Now this guy is obviously easy as anything, but remember how the RNG god smiled on me earlier? Yeah, not this time. Here's a chance to drop the demon's great axe on death, but I had to reload my save several times to get this to work. After no joke about 15 attempts, I finally got it. But this thing again needs 46 strength. I should mention one thing that worries me with this run compared to Dark Souls 2 is the fact there's no option to respec. As such, I'm going to get some farming done now to get my stats ready to hopefully wield anything. I open the Crest of Artorias store and these guys decide to helpfully jump to their desk to fuel this run. Thanks lads, your sacrifices will not be in vain. 
Well, now that we've got enough strength to two-hand the demon weapons, let's go get another demon weapon. Using the Goggles Halberd, we take on the Capra Demon. This goes kind of painlessly. I always find as long as you make it to the stairs, you're fine. The dogs go down in one hit, and Capra Demon only takes a few hits to turn him into Capra Corn on the cob. <laughs> the RNG gods did once again smile favourably as he drops the Demon's Great Machete first try. So joyous. The Halberd did the job, seemed decent overall, so now we're left with just our three Demon Great Weapons. I think it's about time to make the push to Anor Londo, so let's go sort out Quelag. I opted for the Demon's Great Hammer here, and the damage was pretty good overall. I did die once due to getting trapped in the lava, remember my health has not been upgraded at all and also I suck at this game. I stripped off all my armour as I couldn't handle the medium weight rolling, and Quelag goes down after a few jumping attacks. Second bell rung. No more Quelagging behind. Let's get to Sen's Fortress. Since Fortress, as always, was a painful endeavour, the ball kept on coming even though I pushed the lever, the damage looks weak from the demon machete, my brain felt foggy and my hands felt sweaty, the snake man had a head about a foot in diameter, I broke it like I broke this iambic pentameter, I got a bit too cocky when I made it to the top, when you get hit by a blade here, yeah, it's quite a drop. At least I got to the bonfire with a little health left. <clears throat> Moving on, this giant fight here was bereft. Now you probably think I can't rhyme any words with Iron Golem. Anxiety from trying made me take Alprazolam. Think we do good damage? Well don't hold your breath. Luckily I broke his ankles and he fell to his death. I got groped by these gremlins and the next thing you know, we make our grand entrance into Anolondo. Well now we can proceed through Anolondo. Luckily the enemies here decided to kindly jump out of the way for me. Thanks guys. I got up to Smur and Ornstein, and I quickly decided the Demon's Great Axe was not the weapon that in fact that I wanted to fight them with. So it's time for a serious bit of backtracking. As in backtracking all the way to the start of the game, Stray Demon is a good choice for using Demon's Great Axe as he's slow and leaves long openings. It's a slow fight, but not too bad. The axe does okay damage, at least with the one hit we have time to sneak in. I don't tend to stray too far from the one hit and run strategy. So, as per the rules of this run, we can now use Demon's Great Hammer one more time, and we grab the Peculiar Doll. If we can just locate a Peculiar Doll house to put her in, I'm all set. Now, before we nip back to Anolondo, I give Andre the Large Ember and ascend an Axe, a Halberd, and a Curve Sword to plus 10. Upon return to Anolondo, I use the Core of the Iron Golem to create the Golem Axe. This will be my weapon of choice for the Chuckle Brothers. I decide to stay naked for light rolls, but this does mean I get two shot pretty easily by them. I took out Smo first, the axe did great damage actually. Once it's down to one on one, the fight is pretty academic. My only deaths here were for the first phase, maybe about five of them. Super Unseen's attacks are pretty easy to read, so we sort them out with no issue. The axe was pretty cool, it does also have a projectile if you use the R2 one handed, but of course I didn't have enough strength. I definitely prefer this to the Demon Great Axe, much better if you axe me. <laughs> Anyway, we now have warping, which will make the farming needed for these boss weapons just a little bit easier. It's definitely much longer though than getting them in Dark Souls 2. So with a few upgrades, I've now got the Dragon Slayer Spear and Quelex Fury Sword to use. Let's do a bit of a cleanup. 
First, let's take down the Dental Hygiene Dragon. I opted to use the Demon's Great Hammer here, and the damage was just fine. I managed to cut the tail with it to get the Dragon King's Great Axe, although I actually need yet more strength to even two-hand it. Anyhow, the Gaping Dragon falls. There's so many choices now of which boss to do next. I think I'm logically going to go for the one boss that actually gives us two weapons, and that's Crossbreed Priscilla. I opted to use Dragon Slayer Spear for her, as the damage on it seems pretty low unupgraded, and that's only going to help less as time goes on. We managed to poke off Priscilla's tail with little issue, and then finish her off. Dragon Slayer Spear has great reach, and I quite enjoyed using it. Priscilla resists lightning by the looks of it, so the damage wasn't immense, but it didn't matter too much. So now I've got Priscilla's dagger, and I upgrade a halberd into the Life Hunt Scythe. This scythe looks awesome, and has great bleed, but it also inflicts bleed on you with each hit. Not ideal. When I first saw this happening, I thought, what the bloody hell is going on? I decided Sif was the best bet to take down next with this scythe. I actually didn't manage to proc the bleed as I ended up waiting between hits to let my own bleed bar go down. I got too excited near the end, and I bled myself. Ouch. Painful. Not sure I really dig that. Perhaps if I had armor with actual bleed resistance instead of this crap I'm wearing right now, it would have been much better, but of course, I'm an idiot. Anyway, RIP doggy. Okay. So, there's still a couple other optional mothers, but we'll save them for later. For now, let's go slap Seath in the face. Or, actually, he slaps us in the face, because guess what? We've got to cut that tail for the weapon, and this can be a difficult tail cut. I finally got it, cutting off the tiny little nub at the end to get the series classic Moonlight Greatsword. Seath goes down shortly after as he's a bit of a joke otherwise, the only difficult bit is literally getting that tail. The Great Axe did good damage, but it was so heavy that even naked I was pushed to medium roll, and to be honest I find anything but light roll in Dark Souls 1 horrible. But at least we got the Moonlight Greatsword, which I definitely have enough intelligence to wield right now. Okay, so just quickly, the one boss I'm going to kill with fists only, Ceaseless Discharge. One punch! Nice extra lot of souls there, and after some more grinding, I finally get a Greatsword plus 10 to ascend into Artorius' Greatsword with Sif's soul. So, just to recap, because we did quite a lot of stuff there, we've got Priscilla's Dagger, Moonlight Greatsword, Greatsword of Artorius, and Quailag's Fury Sword as well. But things get pretty tricky now. None of the remaining Lord Soul bosses drop a weapon, plus I still have to beat Pinwheel to get to Nito, who also doesn't have a boss weapon. Plus, let's not forget the DLC, and we still have Gwendolyn and Moonlight Butterfly to do as optional bosses. So how do we play this? Well, first, I'm going to use Priscilla's Dagger to take out the Demon Fire Sage. This guy bleeds pretty easily and leaves wide openings for us to get multiple dagger swipes in, so this is kind of elementary. That's the last of these reskins taken care of. He kindly drops the Demon Catalyst for us. Now, the next move might surprise you. Bad touch! Bad touch! That's right, we're going into the DLC and we're going to use the Demon's Catalyst against the Sanctuary Guardian. Now, you might think this is absolutely mental, going against one of the DLC bosses and trying to smack him with a magic staff, but look at that damage! The fire damage this staff does is insane. The only difficult thing is the attack is pretty slow and the range is pretty short, so timing is crucial, but I even managed to cut the guy's tail off with it. After a bit of patience, he goes down without too much issue here, surprisingly. This staff was a real treat, I have to say. It provided me sanctuary when I needed it most. We've got the Guardian Tail as a reward. He does drop a soul also, but you can't exchange it for any weapons. Weird. Anyway. So, you ready for what was maybe the most tedious fight in the run? Gwendolyn using the Guardian Tail. That damage. Ugh. I really wanted to know if Gwendolyn can be poisoned, but I could never get enough hits in consistently before he teleported. That was until we ran him all the way to the end of the room. By this point, the fight's in the bag. You can just circle around him, but I did get to find out the answer. You can poison Gwendolyn. 
but the poison damage seems to barely do anything. Is it somehow traditional that I have to use a crappy poison damage whip in these runs? Anyhow, I went Gwyndolin, and now I get Gwyndol out of here. We got the soul of Gwyndolin, and what do I make from it? The Dark Moon Bow, of course. There's literally only one boss I want to use this on. This goddamn butterfly. I've actually never fought him with range before, and this really trivializes the fight, even though the damage isn't that strong. I call this the butterfly effect. <clears throat> so, Moonlight Butterfly Horn, a full magic damaging spear. Damage looks kinda low though. Right, let's go chin off Lost Izalith quick. Remember I said there was a boss we were skipping? Well, it's Centipede Demon. He doesn't have a boss weapon, and he can be skipped via the Door of Chaos which I had to pay 30 humanity to access. Centipede Demon sucks. I don't feel bad about it. Plus I had to farm 30 humanity to do this, so it's not like it was without hardship. Bed of Chaos, I could just do with Fist as well, but why not use Gravelord Sword Dance? Probably the only boss in the game outside of Ceaseless Discharge that this would actually work against. Okay, so now that nonsense is out of the way, let's review the situation. I have four boss weapons on me. In the base game, there's Pinwheel, Nito, Four Kings and Gwyn to finish off. Unfortunately, the first three, as I mentioned before, do not drop a boss weapon. I already use Nito's. And Gwyn is the final boss, so his boss soul is of no use. I think my best bet is to do the DLC bosses now, because at least then I have a choice of weapons to try on them. The problem though, is that two of the weapons do magic damage only and all the DLC bosses resist magic. Just for the lols, let's try Moonlight Butterfly Horn against Altorius. Okay, what about Moonlight Greatsword? Yeah, that's not happening. Okay, we fight Altorius with Greatsword of Altorius. Fitting, really. Damage is pretty decent, and I'm pretty confident with Altorius' moveset, so no major issues here. I had to use probably my best weapon here, but at least I can switch it out for the Abyss Greatsword which we get from Artorius's soul. Next on the DLC list is Kalamit, and we've got to pull off the tail cut which is pretty challenging. In fact, I think it's the one tail cut that I've never done before in this game. There's very few opportunities to actually hit it. After doing some YouTube research, I found that the dive attack he does is the best option. After getting him to do the tail slam, I managed to slice it off in the most anime way possible. Now, for actually killing this flying rat, it was pretty tough as this weapon uses a huge amount of stamina each swing and my stamina and health haven't been upgraded at all, so it's easy for me to get bodied by one or two hits from him. This sword has the same gimmick as Quelag's Fury Sword in that humanity increases the damage. I only had 7 on me because of using all my supplies to open the door of chaos earlier and I, I just couldn't bring myself to farm more. Also, consequently, it meant I didn't upgrade the bonfire so I only had 5 Estus. I wanted to use the cool looking heavy attack more, but it drained my whole stamina bar with each use so it wasn't really ideal. H how did it go? Is it... is it epic music time? I think it is.
tough one. This weapon is pretty cool, definitely fun to use that R2, but really gotta stack humanity to get the best out of it, or maybe just upgrade it and don't be an idiot like me. Obsidian Greatsword is Calamite's tail weapon, and that will be our weapon of choice for this brawl against Handy Andy, aka Manus. This actually was easier than Calamite, it does 180 damage a pop. Given that I beat him on an SL1 no weapon upgrades run where I did 60 damage each hit, this felt positively luxurious by comparison. I handled it well, if I do say so myself. Manus goes down much quicker than Calami, and the DLC is now complete. Okay, so back to the base game. To recap, these are our last four boss weapons and we have four bosses to kill. One of them, I'm still a little bit worried about to be honest. But first let's tackle the easiest, Pinwheel. I'm going to use my weakest weapon, the Moonlight Butterfly Horn. Do I really need to describe this? We blow him away as usual and move on to Nito. Here I'm going to use the Moonlight Greatsword. Now back last year, I made a worst bosses video and I put Nito in that list. Many people weren't too happy about it, but then Miyazaki in an interview said, if there's one thing I regret, it's Gravelord Nito's boss fight. He's the worst boss in Dark Souls 1. Yes, even worse than Bed of Chaos. I agree with JK Leeds. So there we are. Anyway, Nito is slow and he goes down without very much issue at all. So now there's just two bosses remaining, the Four Kings and Gwyn. I'm going to use Quailax Fury Sword as our weapon for the Kings, and I'm sure hoping this can get the job done if I buff it with humanity. I've only got 8 so I hope it's enough. Four Havels is totally essential here, there's just no other way. Even with all that humanity, I just couldn't do enough damage to kill one quick enough before another spawned. But thanks to Havel's gear, it didn't matter. I just healed through it, stayed close, kept attacking. It's ridiculous how much easier Havel's armor makes this fight. I genuinely don't think I could have done it without it here. <laughs> Only one boss remains. I just need to beat Gwyn with Manus's Catalyst. How hard could that be? Gotta love my stanky ankles walking on this uneven surface. Stankles? Okay, so the two-handed attack is way too slow, but the one-handed is okay, and I can parry with the other hand, so easy. Okay, actually, stop, stop. You know what? As much as I could just smash Gwyn with parry as usual, you've probably seen that loads in many other challenge run videos to the point it's a bit boring. Why don't I instead, as I'm using a catalyst, take this opportunity to give you a preview of a future video we'll be doing next time we return to Dark Souls 1. Well. That was surprisingly satisfying. But that is it guys, Dark Souls 1, boss weapons only. How did this compare to the Dark Souls 2 run? Well, it was still fun, but the farming I had to do for the boss or weapons did get a bit tedious. I also think the boss weapons in Dark Souls 2 maybe had a bit more variety and more of them were kind of fun to use. These were still pretty good as well though. We got to see some cool weapons like the Abyss Greatsword and some surprises like the Demon Catalyst crushing the Sanctuary Guardian and of course, having to use a rubbish poison whip to kill a boss. Classic. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know your favourite Dark Souls 1 boss weapon in the comment below, and if you want to support the channel, you can subscribe, or you can even check out my Patreon, there's a link for it in the description. Until next time, see ya, and have a good one.